Hello everyone, welcome to the channel and welcome to my biggest tips video yet. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna be going through tons of tips for new players lightning fast, so don't blink or you'll miss them. Enjoy. Our first tip is one of the most important things that all have enlisted, the rally point. You can build these with any engineer in any squad and they allow the forward reinforcement of your team onto them. This is hugely important for your team and for the overall game flow of enlisted because it allows you to more quickly attack and re or reinforce an objective without having to walk all the way from base. So make sure you've always built a rally point and always be on the lookout for enemy rally points as well. If you see an enemy squad pop out of thin air or you see a heavily fortified building with sandbags, barbed wire, and lots of enemy squads all around it, it's a safe bet that there's probably a rally point there and you should focus on taking it out to help secure and hold the current objective. AT and AA guns can be replenished of ammunition by pulling out your hammer, going up to them, and holding the correct key, like T on PC. You'll have a little pop-up, and after a short amount of time, you'll see that your AT or AA gun have been completely replenished of ammunition, both AP and HE. You can even move your AT gun if need be by switching to the driver's seat by pressing the 2 key or whichever button you need to switch seats uh, on console. And you'll be able to switch to a movement position and move your AT gun around, giving you better line of sight to take on enemy infantry or even put your AT gun in a better position. This can be really useful if there are enemy vehicles who have managed to flank around behind you, or alternatively, if you built your AT gun in a safe place and then are moving it to a for, uh, forward position, such as building an AT gun in safety at the bottom of a hill or behind a building, and then pushing it out into the middle of the road or the top of the hill to fire down on unsuspecting enemies. Engineers in your squad can also be commanded to help you build deployables from the engineer. Once you place the blueprint down, look at it and press the quick command key, which is defaulted to X on PC or double tapping X or square on console, and you will see your AI run over and start building. Pressing this multiple times will command each AI to start building, which will make it incredibly fast to set up the longer deployables like the anti-tank gun, machine gun, or anti-air gun, which will absolutely save your life when you need to build these quickly and get the first shot off. It can also be useful for quickly setting up defenses on an objective because you can command your AI to build these as you place them so you don't have to build them yourself and you can quickly set up a very fortified position. If you run out of ammo, you can request ammo from your AI squad mates by holding down the alt key or by holding the right bumper and selecting request ammo. Any AI in your squad can give you this ammo as long as they're alive. They don't have to have the current weapon that you're using. However, they're pretty stingy with their ammo. They won't give you any unless you are on your last magazine and have less than 20 bullets currently remaining in that magazine, and they'll also only give you a single full magazine per request. This isn't very good if your weapon doesn't have very high magazine capacity, but if you're using a weapon like the PPSH or the Browning M1919 A630 Cal, this can be incredibly useful where you're going to be getting a massive magazine capacity of 100 plus bullets. Next tip. Cook your grenades and explosive packs. This will make it much less likely for a grenade to come back your way, and it'll make it much easier for you to take out enemy vehicles with your explosive packs. Also keep in mind that you'll be able to use TNT charges to drop them on top of enemy tanks, on their engine decks, or just straight on the turret itself will be a great way to take out enemy vehicles. Just drop it right there, give them a couple tea bags, and blow yourself and them sky high. Now one last thing to keep in mind, those explosive packs, Make sure you guys throw those. If you hold on too long, it will blow up in your hand, and you don't want that. Or maybe you do. AI and Enlisted aren't really the smartest bunch, but you do have a few ways that you can work with them. If you mark a position using the V key, or whatever the bind is you have on console, you can actually command them to look in certain places. Now again, they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. They're pretty slow, but it can be at least be a decent way to make sure they're looking in the right direction and get that extra little bit of time to shoot an enemy. Staying with AI, if you hold down whichever key you use to swap soldiers, you can see on the right side, active formation. By pressing this button, you'll be able to swap between standard, close, and wide formations for your AI. You can also put them on passive where they won't shoot at any enemies unless fired at first. 
This can be useful in a variety of situations. For example, if you're crossing over open ground, you might want to have your AI in wide formation and on passive, so they don't stop in the middle of the ground and start firing. But if you're pushing into a building or into a trench line, it might be better to keep them in close formation and on aggressive, so they take shots and kill anyone who they might run into and make sure to stay in a nice tight formation inside that trench line. When you're running around enlisted, make sure you're taking advantage of crouching, proning, and bracing your weapon. This can be massive when it comes to recoil reduction. When you're crouched, you have 30% less recoil. When you're prone, nearly 70% less recoil. And braced means you have just 15% of the recoil that you normally would have. This is massive, especially when you're using large guns that have high recoil like the MG42, the MG34, or many of the LMGs in Enlisted. But even when you're using a weapon that seems to have low recoil, like a submachine gun, it's still worth it to crouch because it'll make you more accurate and you'll be able to land more shots at range. So make sure you guys are crouching, proning, and bracing whenever you have the opportunity. Not only does it help your accuracy, but it also makes you a smaller target. This next one is for all of you pilots out there. If you hold down the C key, or whatever you have the key for free look binded to, you can actually look around without changing direction of your soldier, plane, or tank. This is especially useful whenever you're in a plane to look around and try to find out where enemy planes are at. When you're coming out of a dive or just circling looking for enemy planes to shoot down, always be using free look to be able to properly find out where the enemy are at and never get caught unawares. And while again, this is the most useful for planes, it's very useful for infantry and tanks as well. Always keep your head on a swivel. You never want to be caught out whenever you're running around and enlisted because it's a very, very quick death in the game when you are caught with your pants down. If you press the control key or quickly tap the B key or circle key on console, you can pop out of the hatch of your commander tank giving you access to an MG42 or a mighty Browning 50 cal to be able to take on enemies, as well as giving yourself a beautiful bird's eye view of the battlefield. Be careful though, enemies can definitely take you out, so if you need to, you can use that machine gun that's mounted on top or your own personal machine gun that you've given to your squad members by hitting the B key on PC or clicking in the right stick on console. This can be a great way to take out any pesky anti-tank soldiers that are maneuvering around you and keep your tank safe from enemy infantry if you end up getting yourself caught out. Weapons and enlisted can be upgraded by spending bronze orders. Now, in the future updates for progression, this is more than likely going to change to a different system. So if you're watching this video in a few months and you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, check out the channel because I guarantee that I'm going to be doing a video going over exactly how to upgrade your weapons in the game. And while you're over there, make sure to like and subscribe as well. All that being said, the important bit here is that some weapons in Enlisted, like the MP40 or the M3A1 Grease Gun, go from mediocre mid-tier weapons to absolute powerhouse killing machines as soon as they get upgraded. This is due to them having decent rate of fire, reload time, magazines, and damage, and getting absolutely huge amounts of bonuses from their upgrades. So make sure you guys are upgrading your weapons because it'll give you a massive edge over the enemy when you're playing. If you're the type of player that really values immersion and you find it weird that an American is yelling at you while you're playing as the German team, if you go to your game settings, you can actually turn on narrator's native language. This will make it to whatever faction you're playing as will have a native speaker as your commander, giving you information and speaking in their native language. Just keep in mind that it is fully in the native language, so if you don't speak German, you might not know that a bombing run is coming in. Every engineer in Enlisted comes with a shovel, and you can actually buy more shovels for the rest of your soldiers, and these can be equipped and used on a certain terrain to dig trenches. This can be a great way to fortify a position and create a makeshift line of trenches to help defend yourself against enemy attacks. It also doubles as a great grave for whenever you or your enemies inevitably die in them. If you have a melee weapon equipped or a bayonet on your gun, you can actually do a charge attack by holding down shift, for sprint and also your quick melee key. This will quickly drain your stamina, but you'll get a nice speed boost and be able to sprint at the enemy and immediately do a melee attack on whoever you have first contact with. This can be great if you end up running out of ammo and need to quickly hit an enemy, or it can be fun if you completely build your 
squad and your soldiers around this by using increased melee attack, a sword, sprint speed, and stamina boost. You can do some serious work with your melee weapons and truly make the Emperor proud. Now, health and enlisted is somewhat weird, and to go through the entirety of it would take a little bit longer than I want each of these tips to last. But the general idea of it is that every soldier has 10 HP, and the more damage your weapon does, the higher chance you have of one-shotting an enemy. So, a gun like a PPSH that only does 5.5 damage per shot has a low likelihood per shot of outright killing an enemy. But a weapon that does high damage, like a bolt action, has a higher chance of outright killing an enemy on the first shot instead of just simply downing them. So keep that in mind when you're picking which guns to use, and this is another reason why upgrading your guns can be so crucial. Getting that extra small damage boost at the max level of each weapon can mean the difference between downing an enemy and outright killing them and saving ammo. This tip is a shameless self-plug, but guys, play with friends. Play with other people. You'll win more matches, you'll have more fun, and you'll have overall a better experience whenever you queue up with other like-minded players. And a great place to join in other players who know a lot about Enlisted and are going to be able to help you learn and have a good time is my personal community Discord. You can find the link for it down in the description below. Unlike other shooters, such as Battlefield or Call of Duty, Enlisted tracks each magazine for your weapons individually. This means that if you reload your gun while it has just five bullets remaining in your current magazine, then later on, if you don't have any full magazines, you'll load up that magazine with just five rounds remaining. Now, you normally won't have to worry about this because your guns will always load in whichever magazine has the most ammo remaining, but you've been, if you've been alive for a long time and you end up running out of ammo, you could end up loading magazines that are only partially full, and you should be aware of this. You can always repack your magazines and fill them all up to full capacity by going to any friendly ammo box and refilling on it. But it's something to always keep in mind so you don't end up with a partially full magazine and mess up your rhythm. Engineers and Enlisted can build different fortifications such as machine gun nests once they have been unlocked in the upgrade tree. Engineers and gunner squads can build the mighty heavy machine gun such as the 50 cal or the soviet dishka that can lay down serious amounts of firepower and absolutely obliterate anything that steps in front of it engineer squads can build the slightly less impressive medium machine gun nest which while having less firepower than the heavy machine gun nest still lay down quite the barrage of fire and can easily hold an objective by themselves both of these weapons can be destroyed by shooting them and can also be repaired by any engineer by simply walking up to them and holding the prompted key. This will put the machine gun back on to the nest and you'll be free to use it again. This can be great to do whenever the gun overheats because you can actually break it yourself and then repair it to quickly fix the overheat. This next tip is all about situational awareness and enlisted, and using the information that the game gives us to make informed decisions and gain an advantage over our opponents. In this clip, I'm driving my 76 Sherman to the front lines when I notice in the kill feed that an enemy cannon just took out a friendly tank. This means that there's a Panzer IV on the loose, and I need to be careful. I don't want to reveal myself because that would throw away the advantage I currently hold. I know that he's here, and he has no idea that I'm lurking around. I'm quiet, I don't play aggressively, I play passively, until eventually my, that patience is rewarded. An enemy tiger drives directly in front of me, and I'm able to snag an easy kill, as well as getting the Panzer IV just a little bit later. This kind of use of information can be applied to many different parts of Enlisted. If you're flying a plane and you see enemy bombs getting kills, that means an enemy plane is flying around, and you need to be worried about them. Are they getting on your tail, or are they an easy, juicy target flying back to resupply? Likewise, if you look at the scoreboard and you see lots of engineering points from a single player, they probably have a rally point down somewhere, and you can take it out and score a big win for your team. Using this information is crucial to getting better at Enlisted, and it will massively help your gameplay and help you win more matches. Along with the Engineer class, the Radio Operator has some of the highest utility in all of Enlisted, with a wide variety of support abilities that can help take an objective or defend one from an enemy attack. Starting off, you'll have access to just a simple artillery barrage, but this can be used to stall out an enemy advance, cut off reinforcements, or just hit an objective before an attack. 
But as you upgrade your squads, you'll get access to smoke artillery barrages, lower cooldown on your standard artillery, and even access to a massive airstrike call-in, which will do huge amounts of devastation across a wide area. Knowing when, where, and how to use these radio operator call-ins is absolutely crucial to using the class to its fullest extent. But once mastered, you'll find yourself able to rack up kills and support your team without ever even having to fire your weapon. Some soldier types and enlisted, such as the tanker, can get access to perks that help with, well, tanking. The loader, for example, can get perks that increase reload speed for your main cannon or changing the ammo type without losing any reload progress at all. The drivers can get access to perks that help with gear shifting and using your brakes, and the gunner can get access to a perk that allows improved targeting skills of your main tank gun. These are all incredibly useful perks, and you should always try to get them whenever they pop up in your roles. But keep in mind, these perks are only active whenever you're in the correct seat. Changing soldiers and seats for those soldiers is as easy as clicking the Change Soldiers button and moving them in the column. Remember, they need to be in the correct seat to take advantage of these powerful effects. Some tanks and enlisted, such as the American tanks like the M4A2 Sherman, have access to powerful stabilizers. This means that when you're moving, your gun will still be incredibly accurate, even when going over smaller hills and bumps. Use this to your advantage. Flank enemy tanks that might have higher frontal armor than you, and always stay on the move to make yourself a harder target to both handheld AT and to enemy tanks. When engaging an enemy tank that you know has a stabilizer, always try to reverse. Don't let them get into your side armor, or they will easily take out your vehicle. You can apply presets for each soldier class in Enlisted by clicking on the soldier, coming down to Presets, and then looking through this small menu. Here, you can auto-equip different setups for your soldiers, remove all unnecessary gear from the soldier, allowing you to quickly move them to the reserves, or apply different presets. You can see in green what will change, and red what you don't currently have. If you try to apply a preset for something you don't currently have access to, you'll see it'll have a pop-up, and it will allow you to buy that preset and all your missing items, and immediately equip it to the soldier. This can be really handy for if you're constantly swapping out different gear or maybe you unlocked a new weapon and you wanted to apply it to all of your different soldiers. This can also be used for your squad presets by clicking on the squad presets in your squad menu and going through each of them. This can be useful for setting up different BR ratings for if you wanted to play at a early war, mid war, or late war stage and then setting your squads accordingly. That is it for this one, guys. There are so many tips I could go through that it would end up being an hour-long video if I did. So instead, I'm going to throw it to you guys. Veteran players, what are your guys' biggest tip for new players? And new players, what are some tips that you guys have found that you think other players might not have quickly found out? Leave a comment down below, guys. I'd really appreciate it. And while you're there, like and subscribe and join our community Discord because we would love to have you guys over there playing some games with me and other players in the community. All are welcome to join. And finally, follow on Twitch. Get involved with an awesome community over there. And without anything else, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Take it easy.